Welcome back. Let's get chatting about the markets and the way forward. We have Aditya Sood now joining in from Incred PMS. Aditya, thank you very much uh, for joining in. I remember in one of our earlier conversations, you were telling us the cash on the books in, is in excess of about 10%. Uh, are you still sitting on a lot of cash waiting to deploy it? And you know what have been the recent additions to your portfolio or where you've increased the weight? Oh, as far as cash is concerned, you know, it is a bit tactical for us, uh, you know, and we are more focused on bottom-up opportunities. But um, what we've been uh, witnessing in the market at the current juncture is that, you know, we uh, need to trade uh, with a lot of caution. And uh, we have typically uh, resorted to sizing as a strategy. So what we are essentially doing is that, you know, there are certain stocks that we already own we would like to increase uh, increase the weight there you know obviously uh, wherever we see a big beat you know for example uh, yesterday indigo reported numbers uh, there was a big beat uh, as far as the numbers are concerned so this is one element of a strategy and the second element of a strategy is to buy uh, stocks which are out of flavor typically uh, we look at stocks which should have a, a p multiple expansion potential uh, alongside the earnings growth uh, there are certain pockets in this market, I must confess, wherein uh, the segments have been out of flavor. That includes uh, discretionary consumption for us. Uh, so we are increasing our conviction in the stocks that we already own in the portfolio. So which are the stocks that you've bought which have been out of flavor? So say something like UPL, which continues to report weak numbers. Is that something which makes the cut? And tell us some, about some of your you know, recent additions and deletions to your portfolio. So we are looking at agri very actively at this point in time because, you know, there has been both, uh, you know, the domestic cycle is not in favor of these companies as well as the global cycle as well. We don't own agri names at this point in time, but it is, yes, one sector which is, uh, you know, of interest to us in a uh, in today's market. Uh, on the discretionary side, and I, I think so what we have also witnessed of lately is that uh, some of the FMCG names have started to look interesting. And that is also getting reflected in the stock price performance and uh, divergence between, uh, you know, how, uh, for example, a GCPL versus a Dabur uh, is performing at this point in time. We are very, very focused on rural names uh, from a consumption standpoint. Uh, two wheelers have done well. Uh, obviously, we have a representation of um, one of the two wheeler names in the portfolio. But we continue to look at FMCG as a basket. You know, uh, some of the companies are really looking very interesting. Uh, QSRs particularly are looking very interesting to us. We own uh, barbecue here. Uh, barbecue has been a stock, you know, which is completely out of flavor at this point in time. We find it, you know, reasonably inexpensive to buy into a barbecue nation today. Aditya, hi. Good morning. Uh, that's interesting, actually. QSRs, I mean, uh, barbecue, I think, has been uh, relatively better off compared to the others because otherwise this whole space has been going through a lot of slowdown. Can you just expand on that point? What is still making you optimistic on QSRs? Because there's been this whole debate about post-COVID world and so many choices and now with, you know, uh, food delivery apps uh, pretty much throwing open the world to us, whether uh, QSRs just have too much competition uh, to cope with. Sure. So I think so. One is that, you know, we have a slightly medium to long-term view about companies here. Uh, you know, the best time to buy a QSR stock to my mind is when uh, same-store growth is negative. Now, if you just map same store growth in a lot of these companies, you know, barbecue, for example, reported a minus 11% same store growth number. Now, the real question to ask yourself is that, you know, how much is that is has been already factored into the price because the stock rallied from 600 rupees. It is a, uh, you know, stock that IPO'd in the previous cycle went to 1600 rupees and now it has collapsed to, you know, close closer to 600 rupees. Now, what great companies will typically do, obviously they'll make pivots. So if you look at barbecue, for example, they have made an excellent delivery pivot. You know, it was a casual dining market leader, but they never had a delivery, you know, uh, post COVID. And that is where I think so, uh, these pivots become very, very important when the markets are not in your favor or when the environment is not very conducive. So our belief is that, you know, we believe that, you know, at some point in time, there is going to be an element of mean reversion that is going to be here uh, for a lot of these companies. And it has got to do with a volume growth thesis in FMCG as well. You know, for example, if you look at Dabur as a company, so, uh, you know, it has uh, consistently outperformed when, when the sector was not doing well, you know. So when rural does well, typically Dabur tends to do well in our, our thesis, you know. So we are just seeing very early stages of recovery here. 
Now, a very critical question to ask yourself is that, you know, whether things can get, get worse off or better off from here on. I think so clearly things are going to get better off from here on. And that is what leads, leads us to believe that, you know, that uh, slow and gradual recovery would help these companies in terms of, you know, so one of our jobs is to factor in how much is factored in the price. And that is what we are uh, potentially trying to do. Okay, Aditya, we're a little short on time today, but uh, good chat. Thank you for uh, joining in with those interesting insights. Look forward to the next time that we speak. Right now, a quick break. We'll come back on the other side. And uh, we will be chatting with Nilesh uh, Kamli, the CEO, the CFO of Star Health, to talk about the company's performance in the third quarter and outlook beyond.